Well, good morning, everybody. Do please take a seat as we come together to worship. Very warm welcome to you and to those who might be watching us online. It's Good Friday, strangely named, but profound words, really, a day that perhaps is like no other. It's not the real day, of course, in the calendar. We've no idea exactly the day that Jesus died, but we remember him on this occasion, particularly his crucifixion. That was a lovely setting of Hallelujah, My Father by Joy Everingham. And uh, she and her sister put a lot of stuff online during lockdown. Do you remember lockdown? And uh, people generously gave resources and recordings for churches to use. And that was one of those that we used during that time. A song that I remember from years ago being really meaningful. In his death is my birth. In his life is my life. That's the good news of this day. Just one or two quick uh, Welcome notices before we press on, just to say after the service today, traditionally, we would be joining with other Christians from the community with the cross, which is drying in the sunshine outside, and uh, we're going to take that up to the top of the hill, St. Blazes Church, leaving here just before 11, so if you want to join us, um, some of us will be leaving the church and heading up to St. Blazes for a start at 11.15. If you want to pick up the procession here, rather than going up the hill and down again, like um, the grand old Duke of York or whatever. Um, just stick around here and about, about 11.55, all being well, um, we will rock up and cross the road and join you and we'll have a devotional moment on the steps here before we go up Regent Street to the other churches. And there are hot cross buns, I believe, at 12.30 at St Paul's, so you can't have those unless you walk, all right? <laughs> Even just down the path, do something to earn... A lovely moment for us to be together as Christians. And just to say, Easter Sunday morning, a very special day as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus and uh, we'll be down on the seafront at the very crack of dawn. It's 6.30 start, but it's actually 5.30 by today's time because the clocks change. So if you want to be there, it's going to be quite an early start, but it's always a joy to be down on the seafront. And uh, the cafe down there is opening specially for us to do breakfast, so there'll be sausage or bacon baps or veggie baps available and coffees and teas at the usual cost price down there. But we've had a lovely time down there the last couple of years and uh, do join us if you can, if you can just drag yourself out of bed. It's a, an amazing thing to watch the sun come up out of the sea, which we're trusting for. The forecast is looking a little more hopeful. So praise the Lord, do join us. And then the service at 10.30 will be for all ages and will include Holy Communion sort of embedded within it as part of our Easter celebrations. And then in the evening, a little informal opportunity to come together. If you'd like to come out at 6.30 here, there'll be some refreshments, some songs and one or two video clips and things, just re reflecting on the day and the Easter story. And that's something you might want to bring a friend to who might be less kind of familiar in this kind of setting. Just bring them along to share and hear about the good news. And we'll be promoting this wonderful Alive course, which we'll be running after Easter on a Wednesday evening for five weeks. If you haven't heard about that, pick up some details and I'll tell you a bit more about it again on Sunday. As always, there's an offering bucket by the door if you want to make a gift to the work of the church. That's much appreciated and we thank you for your support. Let's join with some words from the book of Romans. And this is uh, some famous words. Um, let's declare them together. I'll re read the bit in the, the less bold print and if you can join in if you'd like to with the bold bits. We preach Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. We have one or two songs and hymns this morning that are of a more reflective nature. The first is that lovely hymn, My Song is Love Unknown. If you're able to stand, please do, as we worship the Lord together.
I'm reading from Mark 15, verse 1 to 15. Jesus before Pilate. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus still made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release the prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to get Pilate to release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them, crucify him, they shouted. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy, satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to cruci be crucified. So we pray. Loving God, many of us have heard this story over and over again down the years. And it just amazes us that the precious Son of God should be willing to go through such abuse, rejection and pain. And like a sheep before the shearers is silent, so Jesus remained quiet and just took it all. Because he knew deep down that this was the way, the way to life, for forgiveness, cleansing and restoration. We thank you that in the cross there is healing and there is hope and that Jesus gave it all for us. So as we draw near on this Good Friday, we pause to acknowledge our own need and also to say before you, Lord, that we are not worthy to receive what you're giving us. For we have failed and let you down in so many ways. So in a moment of quiet, let's just ask God to forgive us. Remember before him the things we've said and done that were not right, that have hurt other people and offended the goodness of God. We thank you, Lord, that your nature is to have mercy and that you've done something so incredible to take away our sins. We recall the words of the psalm, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. That's infinity, pretty well. Thank you, Lord, that when you take away our sins, you utterly remove them. You forgive us and put it in the past. So help us to do the same. And on this day, to commit ourselves to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to deny those selfish desires, to pick up the cross and be willing to walk the path, sometimes suffering along the way, but identifying with Jesus in his sufferings that we too might share in his glory. So speak to us this day, we pray. Lead us on in our discipleship and our pilgrimage of faith. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Do you join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer if you'd like to? Familiar words, this is the slightly more modern version if you're used to tradition. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Continue in our reading now from Mark's Gospel. This morning's second reading is also taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 16 to 32. The soldiers mocked Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is the Praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews. Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spat on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The Crucifixion of Jesus A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, The father of Alexander and Rufus was passing by on his way in from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, divided up his clothes. They cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right hand and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, So, you who were going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, this King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Remain seated to sing this next song. Tremble, tremble. 
Following on from George's reading at verse 33. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling out, calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone and let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, Surely this man was the Son of God. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there.
it's really powerful singing that, isn't it, on a day like this? We can't do Good Friday without looking at it through the lens of Easter Sunday. And we can't look at Easter Sunday without looking at the book of Revelation and the pictures of God glorifying Jesus in the final days. And it's all there for us to be rejoicing in. Just want to use a short meditation now by Nick Fawcett. We've used these on a few occasions. He's a wonderful author who often writes scripts that are speaking from a character in the Bible. So it's kind of apocryphal. It's not true to scripture exactly, but I think he grasps some truths through the eyes of some of the people who were there. And this is a few words based on James, the disciple of Jesus, and what it felt like for him after Jesus had died on the cross and been put in the tomb. So just imagine yourself in the shoes. And if you're a woman, all the women mentioned, did you notice? Not just the named ones, but a whole load of others who'd come up from probably Galilee with Jesus, a whole bunch of people. Many of them had supported Jesus' ministry. What did it mean to them that it had all suddenly come to a horrible end? He was dead, and I still can't believe it. I kept on hoping it was a bad dream, that any moment I'd wake up and find we were back together again. There on the mountainside as he preached to the crowd. There in the boat as he stilled the storm. There on the road as he healed the sick. There in the upstairs room as we shared supper. But I didn't wake up. And I knew it was no dream. It was real. And yet I couldn't accept it. I was waiting for another miracle, waiting for him to come down off the cross and wipe the smile off their faces, waiting for God to do something, anything, to stop this madness. I still can't understand it. Why did he have to die? Why the waste of such a beautiful life? It doesn't make sense to me. But it did to him. That's the extraordinary thing. He warned us of it often enough. He told us it had to happen. He even said we should welcome it. Well, it's happened now. It's over. I witnessed his last gasp. I heard his last cry. I watched them drive the spear into his side. I was there when they cut him down, limp and lifeless. I saw the stone rolled against the tomb. I still can't believe it, but I've seen it with my own eyes. He was dead. In a prayer. Lord Jesus, you gave your whole self for us. Not just a little, not simply part, but everything. Offering your life for the life of the world. You took the way of the cross and endured the agony of death. You experienced the pain of betrayal, the hurt of denial, the sorrow of being abandoned by your closest friends. You suffered the awful isolation of separation from God as you took our sins on your shoulders. Forgive us that we often find it hard to offer anything in return. Forgive us that we hold back, giving only grudgingly of ourselves. Lord Jesus Christ, you went the whole way for our sakes. Help us to come a little way in return. Amen. Just a few thoughts from me. We often sing those words. What can I give? What can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? What can be said? What can be sung as a praise of your name for the things you have done? 
when you read the testimony of some amazing people around the world and down through history, you kind of feel, well, I've done so little. I've given so little of myself. Because Jesus calls us to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow. And yet for many of us, we're just getting on with life like our neighbours and the people around our communities. And perhaps we don't look very different. But you know, it's hard, isn't it, to take Jesus at his word. In our hearts, we get the idea, don't we? But in our flesh, we recoil. We resist it. No one wants suffering. No one wants pain. No one wants rejection and scorning. We crave resurrection life, and yet the Apostle Paul reminds us that to share in his sufferings is necessary if we want to share in his glory. This is the gospel. This is the topsy-turvy paradoxical story that we're called into, that actually the way to life is often through humility, laying ourselves down for the sake of others. Jesus brought in a new kingdom that challenged the power structures of his day and the ways of the world that carry on, don't they, in our generation. He brings in a godly, humble and beautiful way of service and sacrifice, one that is in so many ways appealing and attractive because it breaks through human selfishness. It turns human structures on their heads. And we look at the wondrous cross and survey the scene. And we see how it speaks of love poured out. A death that opens the gateway to life. A saviour who gave himself for you and me and for the world that is in general rebellion to God. And so we say thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Help us to be the people of the cross and the people of the resurrection, not to be ashamed of the gospel because this is the power of God for salvation. Praise God. As we take the cross around the town in a few minutes, our prayer is that it will speak powerfully to people. Many will have forgotten and need reminding. It's wonderful in many of the schools locally. The good news of Jesus has been shared through Open the Book, and I was doing an assembly as well the week before last at St Blasius. It's amazing. We've told the story, reminded people, and our prayer is that this glorious gospel will be heard by many today. So let's pause to pray. Lord God, we thank you for the cross, for the price you paid. And we thank you that life flows from his body to us. Many of us took bread and wine last night, remembering Jesus, being drawn into a deep relationship with him. Remembering his body broken for us, his blood shed for us. And our prayer today is that as we testify to our faith in Jesus, as we follow in the footsteps of Jesus and walk behind the cross, so you would speak to people who look on. May we not in any way be the people they're looking at. May the cross be magnetic, may you drawing people to look in wonder. Go back and find a Bible and explore the story. May this day be a powerful day in our community and across the Isle of Wight as we tell the story of Jesus and as we prepare to declare resurrection on Sunday. And we pray that many of us would have the courage to invite people along to things and we commend you the course called Alive that we would draw people to come and think and explore what it means to us that Jesus 
is alive today. The Father also, on this day, we are so aware of the suffering in our world. Jesus, the suffering servant, we bring you our broken world. Be present today where men, women and children are suffering and bring hope and comfort and healing. We think of those who are unjustly imprisoned, being punished and abused. We pray for their families distraught and fearful. For those who are refugees removed or fleeing from the place they once called home. Bless them, Lord, and care for them, we pray. And give big hearts of compassion to those communities that seek to welcome and support them. Often a great challenge when resources are limited. And our hearts go out today to the bereaved, those who lost loved ones in the coach crash in South Africa and the bridge collapse in America. <laughs> Jesus, would you draw alongside all those who are grieving today? And we cry out to you for the war-torn places of the world, Ukraine, Sudan, Gaza, Israel and the West Bank, Syria. It's almost an endless list. Father, would you bring relief and aid to those facing starvation? Give shelter to those who have no roof over their head. So many living in fear with no idea what the future holds. Lord, would you move mountains to break the deadlock, to see the captives set free and terrorists brought to justice. Give wisdom to the leaders of the nations as together we seek to address these evils. In our violent and hostile world, we call on you, the King with the crown of thorns, to bring in your kingdom reign of justice and peace. One not through might and power, but through sacrifice and suffering for us all. Thank you for the cross. May it speak powerfully today across the world. Amen. We're going to finish with that beautiful hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
So to him who's able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Do enjoy the day. And in about 10 minutes, some of us will be heading off up the hill. Um, There will be, I think, some refreshment around if you're sticking around and waiting for an hour for us to come back. So uh, you're welcome to stay. Robin and Janet will be here to look after you.